Many times, as you build in no-code, you will have data in multiple tables. Stuff living over here that links to stuff that lives over here. But wouldn't it be great if you could visualize all of that in one succinct dashboard? Well, thanks to the amazing record pickers in SmartSuite, you can do exactly that in the SmartSuite dashboard. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down for you step-by-step step exactly how to do this with your SmartSuite dashboards. So if learning more about this is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools and SmartSuite is one of our favorite no-code tools in 2025. Now, before we get into the heart of the video, I do want to invite you to follow along with me in your own SmartSuite account. Just go ahead and open up your SmartSuite and you can recreate what I've done here and just follow along step by step. If you don't already have a SmartSuite account, please consider signing up with our affiliate link. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. Now let's go ahead and hop on into my screen and we will get started. First, we're gonna explain exactly the structure that we're working with here. So first and foremost, we have clients. That is its own table. And we have Acme and Echo Company right here. And of course, as you do in a table, you could build out all the different data pieces that you need, like the client website, the client address. Uh, maybe you link this to contacts and other things. But for now, what we're imagining is we want our clients to link to projects because when we do a project, it's on behalf of a client. So our next table projects, Again, I'm keeping it simple for our example, just has three different projects. And you can see that two of them are linked to Acme, LTD, and then the third project here is linked to Echo Company. And then of course we would imagine that there's a lot more project data here. What's the start date? Who's the project manager? All of that stuff. But again, for simplicity, this is the core foundation that we need. Next, we have a link to our third table, which is tasks. So here in our tasks, we create a task on behalf of a project. So here I'm able to say, what's the name of the task? Uh, obviously we have the link to the project. So this task is on behalf of a specific project. We can track the status of that task and we have a due date. Now, of course, as is true with the other tables, you'll have more information here. You might track who is assigned to the task. You might track any additional files required for the task to be completed, or maybe files that uh, show that the task has been completed. There are many layers that you can incrementally dive into here, and you can add all of that data as you go through. But now that we understand the overall structure, let's talk about how we can put together that front end component so that when we're working in the database, we only need to look at one screen and it has all that information readily available for us. So we're gonna build our SmartSuite dashboard. Now I'm gonna roll up to the highest level, in our case that's clients, and I'm gonna build my dashboard here. So I'm gonna, on the left-hand side of the screen, hover over the sidebar so that it opens up as you see here, and I'll go down to create a new view. And when I'm hovering over here, it opens up my different options. I can put these views in a folder if I'd like. Folders are really nice because we can then stay organized on our side panel. And in addition to that, we can grant specific access to the folders. So maybe we only share the folder with people so they don't see the other views. They just see the dashboard and whatever else we put in this folder. This is an option for us, but for our example, I'm just gonna, again, keep it simple and move forward with the dashboard. We can name it and choose whether it will be public or private. If it's public, all members with full access can edit and save changes. But if it's private, only you, the creator, can edit and save changes to the view. So let's go ahead and create it. And now we're gonna dive into building the different components here. So we're gonna first start by adding a widget. And we are going to look for the record picker or selector. And here it is. It's under the record display category. And what this is going to allow us to do is select a record from a list. And of course, our highest level is the clients. So let's have the uh, client selector is how we will name this. We can add a description here. Let's just add some sample text here for demonstrative purposes. And we can have this show up as a tooltip or just always showing up below the title as you see right here. Uh, as a tooltip is gonna give us that little icon where we can hover over and then get the description. So now we have to decide what the source is. And it just knows because we started in the client's table that our source is clients, perfect. 
but we can also choose to apply some filters here. So maybe we want to say something like, uh, we only want people to see those clients that they're assigned to, or we only want folks to see clients that have an active project. These are just some examples, but we can filter down the clients. Now, for our purposes, we only have two clients in our sample data, no need to apply a filter, but we can do that if we need to right here and just build those conditional filters. Now, in addition to that, we can also sort the data that's in the list. So right now you'll see it's sorting by name alphabetically. We can flip that around and you can see that Echo now appears above Acme. So you get the idea, a lot of customization here. Now, lastly, we can choose what fields we want to display here and if we will allow our users to create new records. And this is really helpful. If they wanna just create a new client, they're searching, they can't find the client in our system, they can just click here and add new record. It's gonna open up the client record and they can just put in a new name. So I'll call this test client. Once they save that up, boom, done. That new client is now added and is gonna show up in the list and they can make that selection. So this is a really handy option if you trust your users to actually create new records in this data set. So we also have those fields to display. What are we showing here? Now we don't have a lot of information in our client's table, but if we wanted to add more information, we can select these different elements here. And you can see I've selected up to three. So the fourth one will not bring over and we can show that here. So this is Acme and we can bring in additional information that might be hidden in that table. And so for example, we might bring in address or phone number, et cetera, to help our users make sure they're selecting the proper client. All right, now once we're happy with the way this looks, we will add the first widget. So let's go ahead and pop that one in. And now we can size it because it's this big size that we just don't need. Let's go ahead and shrink it down and we can elongate it if we want. Now for our purposes, we're selecting one from the list. I kind of like this because it allows us to keep this shorter or smaller. If we presented the full list, we would have to elongate this whole thing on the side. We'll do that in our next example or in our third example. But we've built our first record selector. So we're able to select the client. So what, what does it do for us? Let's dive into the next part. We will add another widget and now we can add another selector. So I'm doing a quick search here for another selector. And this time we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to the next layer down, in this case projects. So this will be the projects selector. We can add a description. I'll keep it simple for this one. So now it's time for us to pick our source. And you might be inclined to pick projects because that's the information we wanna bring in, but don't get ahead of yourself just yet. What we need to do is actually connect it to the first selector that we had. Previously, we created the client selector, and so we choose that as the source because when a user chooses a client, then we want to display information pertaining to the client. So that's what's gonna show up here. Yes, we're gonna show project information, but it pertains to the client that's selected from the previous selector. So we choose our client selector. Now it's gonna ask us, what do you want us to show you? And what I care about here is linked information, right? We're not looking again at the client's level. We wanna look at a linked table to the client's table. In this case, we just have one option because clients only links to one other table. It is linked to projects. So make the selection here. Now, just as we did before, we have all the options from before. We can filter, we can sort, we have the selection dropdown where we can add additional fields to display. It's all good here. We can allow users to create new records. And bonus, if they create a new record here, they've already selected a client, it's gonna automatically link that record to the client. We'll test it out when we finish our dashboard. Again, we don't have to worry about connected widgets right here, so let's add this widget. This is our project selector. This is round two. So I'm gonna size it down just a bit. I'm gonna move it up here so that it's right next to my client selector. Now, for our final selector, not our final widget, but our final selector, we're gonna bring in another selector, and this time we're going to our third layer, to our tasks. So what is the source? Well, first let's name it tasks selector, and the source is gonna be the project selector. We're going up a level. So what's gonna happen? Our users look at a client, they pick one, they see the projects that are linked to the client, they pick a project, then they see the tasks associated with said project. That's what we're doing here on our projects, because we're looking at our project selector as the source, we have two links, 
Projects links to clients upstream, and it links to tasks downstream. We want to choose the latter. So we bring in the link to tasks, and now we're all set. We can bring in additional data. We can sort just as we could before. And this time, I want to move over to style. So we have the option to choose it as a dropdown with a background color of white, neutral, or custom. Or we can display this as a list. And it's just going to list out all of the relevant records that pertain to this particular filter. I'm going to go with list. I'm going to give it that neutral background so it pops a little bit. Let's add the widget. And so now I can size this up. Let's put it right here and size it down here. And there we go. So just like that, you can see, and let me just match this so that they're the same height. So you can see that when I pick a client, then my projects are filtered differently. There's only one project associated with Echo Company, and it's project three. I can add a record, cool. And then when I pick project three, my tasks are immediately updated to reflect. I've got three tasks for project three, seven, eight, and nine, as you see right here. Now, if I go over to Acme, what do I see? Well, they have two projects, project one, project two. Project one, which is selected by default, the top project, has these three tasks. And then project two, see those tasks automatically update. Now that we have this, what are we going to do with it? Well, we want to bring in the task information so that we can work on that task and update it. So let's add another widget. And this will be not a selector, but a record display. So we'll come down here. And you see we have the record details. Again, within the record display here, we can bring in record details. Now, I do want to highlight, you can also bring in record history and record comments coming soon. I do not have a date on these yet. As of this recording, I don't have access to this, but I have been told that it's on the way. So let's bring in those record details. We'll drop them in. And what do you think the source is? Of course, it's going to be our third selector, the tasks selector. And we can choose the fields from tasks that are going to show up here. So maybe we want to show the status and we can choose how wide we want that to be. We can choose if someone can edit it or only read it. We can choose if we're going to display the name and if we want to put any help text here as well. And we can do this for every field that we add to our mess here. Who is it assigned to right here? Who or what is the due date? All of this information. Is it editable? What's the field width? etc. We can reorder these things by dragging them here in the fields. And that, my friends, is how we set up one beautiful dashboard that shows everything in one place. I'm going to resize this, bring it up here to the side. And now imagine I'm working. Rather than flipping through three different tables, I find my client, I select the associated project, I select the associated task, and then I can assign it to somebody, I can add a due date right here inside of my dashboard, I can change the status, etc. Once you're happy with the way this dashboard looks, go ahead and toggle off of edit. This is going to put you in actual view mode and feel free to share it. One closing thought here is if you share this with people and you give them the assigned to level of permission, let's take a look at this and I'll show you what this is. We add somebody here. It could be Adam, let's say. And if I make Adam's permissions assignee, Adam then can only view the content in the dashboard that he's been assigned to. He cannot create, he cannot view, he cannot edit. And this overrides my dashboard permissions, right? So just because I can add a record here, if Adam comes in as an assignee and that's the permission he has to access this app, well then he can only do that inside of this dashboard. And he will only see those records. He will only see those clients, those projects, and those tasks that he is assigned to. This is next level permissioning inside a smart suite in action. I know we went really quickly in this video. I hope you got a ton of value from it. If you have questions that I could not get to here in this clip, please swing by our website. We've got folks standing by that can help and a ton of resources available to you. Of course, if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, keep on building.